Welcome to the Nanslo Lab Activity Demonstration. Your presenters today are Sue Bui, Susan Merkovich, Barbara Bolson, Gloria Tomich, and Albert Balbon. So let's just let's just uh, take a look then at the male human testes, and what we'll do is we'll take a look and see if we can get close enough to see the sperm, and we'll try to capture an image. And um, again, I think that uh, I can send out, if you would li any of you would like, the pictures of the onion root tip that we got to see Susan Murkovich and I were playing with. I mean, it was fantastic. We could see all the mitotic stages much better than any microscope we would ever have. So, um, OK, Albert, so how would you like to get started? Um, first of all, um, you're going to be looking at, um, in real time, what is um, on the uh, slide that is currently on the microscope. And uh, you can control the stage in an X, Y, Z configuration by using the um, uh, controls on the left-hand side. And you'll see here, I'll move the um, slide. And I'll first take control, and this is the way the student would do it, is right click anywhere in the gray area and request control of the VI. And then they can use the controls to move the slides. And um, right now, I'm just doing the left. And you can go back again, and like so. So it's quite uh, easy to use. The up and down go in the Z direction. So that's the same as doing uh, the focusing. And I can put this out of focus and go back up again, and we can get that into focus. And I'm, it's set right now that you can do either a coarse or a fine selection. And that's really um, how many steps that you are taking uh, to move in the Z direction. If you go to a fine one, you can step through very um, precisely to get different depth within the uh, slide. Okay, You can also. Let me see, I'll go out of focus. You can also use the autofocus function to um, get the microscope to come up as close as it can to what it thinks is uh, in focus. And there might be a little bit of dust on the slide there, so that's not working as well today, so I'll just use the manual. Okay, you can change the objectives by uh, in the objective area. And I'm going to do that right now. And it will change, and uh, the camera will automatically adjust uh, for the uh, luminescence. And I'll try the uh, autofocus here. And um, you can see, so we've changed the objective. And we can go stepping through each one of them and use the same procedure. Uh, you can also um, change the luminescence of um, the microscope, but you need to first turn off the <laughs> auto exposure to be able to do that. And Suzanne found that, or Susan found that out the other day when practicing that uh, it can mess things up if you don't turn that auto exposure on. Uh, you most likely won't need to use that function for any of these labs, but uh, it is a, a capability of the microscope. Um, the microscope imaging um, portion allows you to um, set the white balance for your image that you're looking at. You can also change from a normal view to um, a negative if it helps you to see uh, the content better. Or you do get a blue, black, black and white, or a sepia. And any one of these uh, special effects uh, will also show up when you capture the image. And when you click on the capture image, it'll take about 20 seconds or so to capture that image. And once it, uh, that light goes back out again, you can go down to the View Capture Image tab at the bottom. And it will start up another window. And it will allow you to take a look at the uh, image that you have taken. This one seems to be a little bit out of focus. But you can also see that you can zoom in by clicking on any part of the image. Now, if you find that it is out of uh, focus a bit, you can go to the focusing and adjust it a little bit, take the image again until you get the right image that is uh, necessary for your lab. 
The other uh, controls that you see on the bottom right hand side have to do with a, a second camera that is taking a look at the microscope from outside. The other camera was uh, taking a look at the slide itself. This one will take a look from the outside. When I click on the picture in picture it will give you the view and there are presets that have been set up on the camera and they will take a look at uh, the stage and the objectives. The number two it seems here at a little monitor that is beside the um, microscope um, and then other portions of the microscope that you have here. And number six takes you back to sort of the full view. You can also do a pan, tilt and zoom with the controls and take a look at any piece that you want. We find that students the first time they get to this activity, they realize they can move the camera. They will probably spend a couple minutes looking around the lab as much as they can. <laughs> but, uh, and that seems to be the very first time they start any lab. Uh, or the first time they get onto an RWSL, they'll search out that room to see what is happening there. Okay, so I'm just going to turn that off. Uh, is there any questions about this? Albert, can, oh, sorry, can I make a few comments? Sure. Okay, everybody keep in mind as well that this is the old microscope. Is that correct, Albert? You guys are getting even more advanced microscopy. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, I have uh, a, a new one that is um, set up here, a, a Nikon um, CL uh, microscope that is here and it has an auto loader on it that uh, we can select from uh, up to 200 different slides that we can put onto, uh, onto the stage. So um, it gives the student quite an ability and range uh, of depending on the availability of which slides are going to be there. Right. And then the other nice thing is, you know, this is digital and so that's what we're seeing, you know, we're, we're preparing most of our students or my students in particular for the medical field and so, you know, MRIs are digital, a microscopy is digital and so it's nice that they get to get their hands on the technology. Also, um, for everyone out there, keep in mind this is only one of the many labs and so we have these uh, curriculum leads, all right? And what we do as the uh, department panels, myself, I'm on biology, they say, what kind of lab would you like to see? And if we can do it, we will do it. And so they're currently working on a urinary analysis lab. They're working on a blood typing lab. They're working on a respiration lab. This is just for biology. There's also chemistry. I'm not sure what labs they have. Albert, you may know. But basically, it's like Google. Whatever we can think up, they are going to try to do and then, you know, we give feedback um, and it's just, a, it's fantastic. I mean, we talked about eventually potentially putting cameras, for example, into satellites. I mean, so it's limitless. So this is very, a very, very small slice of the pie that we're starting with here. Yeah, so on the microscope that I have set up here, there is also an option for doing uh, fluorescence and I'll be exploring that. Uh, starting in the new year, and uh, so that's another option that we have with this uh, type of microscope. That we have. Um, I just want this is Susan Markovich. I just wanted to mention regarding the um, using the collaborate to look at what Albert's doing. The experience for the student when they're in the um, microscope room themselves is very instantaneous. And so I notice on since we just did it yesterday, I notice on the Blackboard experience we're getting a little bit of delay and loading of the images. But that's not really what the student experiences. They experience a much more, um, you know, realistic feel, uh, and it's very instantaneous what they see. We don't ex see the loading like we're seeing in this collaborate. So I just want to mention that the student experience is actually much better than this kind of shared view. Yes, the uh, cameras that we have uh, on the system go into a streaming server and there's about a, a 200 millisecond delay from the time the image is taken until it goes out of our lab and then whatever latency it is between us and the um, uh, student is added onto it, but that may only be uh, you know one or 200 more milliseconds, so we're still under half a second before 
before you see the change in the, the uh, activities that you want like moving the stage and that. Um, so it's actually uh, quite responsive. It's almost like using the remote on your t television set. Okay, I just want to mention the other ways that we're using this. At our college, we are using this to um, uh, augment uh, existing labs in the laboratory itself for students that the instructors are using this to demonstrate at the front of the class with this on a big projector and then letting their students um, either work on the microscopes within the lab or doing it remotely by going to the library to hook on to the, through their computers or if they have computers within uh, their biology lab they can actually access this in groups. Uh, so that's other uses that we have within our institution. And as well, so you see the lab report or that should be in front of you, but we're also, well, you know, you could, because this is open source and everybody keep in mind that everything that you, you see, all these fantastic labs that are coming out are open source, which means that you or anyone can access them at any time. And so I think Sue Schmidt could talk more about that, but in this lab in particular you can see that the students are required to um, create and interpret their data and then uh, turn in a lab report, right? So they're going to A, need to understand the scientific method, understand how to write a lab report, understand how to interpret these images, and they'll also be counting cells through the phases of mitosis and comparing and contrasting mitosis and meiosis. So that's, you know, it's not just about the microscope, they get the data collection and then they have to bring it all together because we focus on that problem solving approach or Sue Schmidt, I think you say inquire, inquiry based approach. Um, yes, that's correct. We are trying to create all of the lab activities, um, the 12 that we are, are putting together for the CHEO initiative using an inquiry-based model. So there's a data collection piece, but in addition to that, an inquiry-based model actually allows the student to make a lot of decisions in relationship to the information that they have, view have viewed. Well, Albert, would you like someone to try the microscope? Are we ready for that? Or do you have any, does anybody have anything else? I will release control of it. Um, so if you are logged into Denver, you should be able to take control of that from there. Amendment. OK. We tried to go in like from 4, let's say, to 40 and just did autofocus. But if we weren't in the realm, it would not have focused. Do you know what I mean? We had to have like this image right here that she has up right now. We had to have, you know, close to a uh, clear image. Let's see. I'm going to um, change right. the objective. Should I do that? Yeah. Have you taken control? Yes. There you go. I have, so I have control. Okay. What you're looking at is, again, the human testes, okay, the male sex organ that holds the sperm. And so what we want to do, Susan, actually go all the way back down to four, okay? And then increase it as you go, and then we'll see if we can identify a sperm. How does that sound? Okay, so I think you can see me um, controlling the objective, and obviously I'm going to need to should I focus now and then go down to four? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. OK, so I just used the autofocus, which was less than satisfactory. So luckily, I went the right direction there. <laughs> OK, so there we are down at four. OK, so, let's, so now Susan is going to move the stage so that we get a central view of these uh, male testes. So go ahead, Susan, move the stage. So what and I'm I actually, go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm looking at it from my view of interacting directly with the microscope. So I don't know what kind of page loading your experiences on, on Collaborate, but for me, everything is instantaneous when I 
when I make a change. Yes, I'm seeing yeah, that. From my perspective, it's, it's very quick, Susan. And so I just wanted to chime in because actually I'm on a wireless um, line of sight to tower. And so this is performing really well for me. And I am very like a typical student. I also wanted to mention that um, you'll notice on this LabVIEW software, there is a, t a telephone number. So as students are performing these experiments, say they're in a group of four, they can all call into this phone number using this PIN number, and they're talking to each other while they're performing. So what we're doing here is very similar to what a student would be doing. We're just using the Blackboard interface so those participants who are not signed into the LabVIEW software can see what's happening. And students also, this, this lab takes approximately two hours for data collection. And so they have the choice to either collect their data, collect their screenshots, and go do their lab, or they can do a portion of it here as well. So uh, you know, on average, I'd say about two hours. So um, uh, Susan Merkovich, you went to direct four. Me. Now go ahead and bring us up to 10, then 20, then 40, then 60. And let's capture the image at 40 and 60. You know, there's a question there. Can we do uh, wet mounts um, on this particular uh, microscope? Like the new one anyway, the Nikon one, we can do the one by three slides. Um, they can probably put it on manually if that needs to be done, uh, if they're for wet mounts. Um, but we can have the other ones in the slide loader if needed. As for controlling the light, yes, you'll be able to adjust the light to intensity on uh, the microscope. I'd pretty much be sunk without the autofocus, you guys. OK, there's the 10. So that looks good. 20. And you have to get it into uh, some type of focus we found before you use the automatic focus. Do you need me to move the stage, or are you am uh, I where you want to look? You. Twenty, yeah, that would be nice. Then they can, you know, you can have a look around. And as information for the participants, there are some specific instructions that we are we have for using the LabVIEW software. And actually, we are also refining those procedures as well. And we'll be putting together a Captivate video so that a student can go in and in advance of doing the lab actually then know, you know which buttons are for the backward, forward, right, left as far as the stage is concerned. Um, how do you focus in on the specimen? Because we do have a course in fine button and up down, just as the it's very it replicates what would happen in the lab in the control. So just wanted to mention that as well. Well, and, and Sue, you also have right now the hard copy of that as well. I think Dan and Albert are finishing that today. So you. Know, well, and, and Sue, you also have right now the hard copy of that as well. I think Dan and Albert are finishing that today. So you know, you do have that now. So they have a hard copy. So they should be prepared, uh, not surprised, when they come into these labs as long as they do their reading. I mean, you've really gone line by line in explaining this and how to do this. Do you want me to go up to 60 or release control of the microscope now? Or? Go ahead and capture the image so everyone can see that. OK. OK, there's a little button down here at the bottom, capture image. And you wait until the little green light turns off, we discovered, <laughs> before <laughs> clicking view captured image, which I'm going to click on down at the bottom. It's just a little tab. And then can you see that? Not yet. Okay, I'm going to have to click it on mine here. Okay, you're going to share it. Yep, it's there we go. Beautiful. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now this gives you actually. The uh, so the well, thing that is happening is, although we're seeing everything you're doing, we're not seeing your right. mouse movement. Yeah. Oh, really? No. Oh, we're okay. seeing the result, but not the mouse movement. Okay. But when well, Albert well, does it, because he is controlling the application, we can see the mouse movement. Got right. it. Okay. Well, let me know when you want me to release the control. Now the image yep. you can see here, you Go can uh, it it comes. It's a, a five megapixel image, and you can um, click on it to uh, zoom in to different areas of it. 
just by moving around and maybe I'll slow down here so that it refreshes for everybody. But you can scan yeah, the ad. Was, oh, yeah. I was just going to say, in the microscope view, when you're in there, there's none of this um, loading of the page or anything. It's very instantaneous and responsive. Okay, so I'll give it back to you now so we can all see the, uh, the application. So st students are required to capture an image, and then they're required to label certain parts of this image, for example. Okay, in the onion root tip, there's several things they need to mark and count cells in the male testes. They have to identify the seminiferous tubules and the sperm. And so we could actually see some of the tails when you guys uh, did the um, objective at 40 and captured the image. Did you do 60, Susan? Nope, I was just going to do it. I don't remember if we could right get now. a clear picture on 60 or not. Now the autofocus is picking up the dust. On Beautiful. It. Able to see. <laughs> also, you'll note that when you uh, change objectives, that the auto exposure uh, is set for each objective, and so there's a preset uh, number for the luminescence. So you can only change it once the luminescence once you get to that particular objective. So you want to you want to hit the capture image button on the on the screen bottom right. I'm that way looks, ahead of you, Dr. Bowie. Oh, I, I, oh yeah, I, I can't, that's right. I can't see you do that. That's right. Okay. Have we captured the image there now? Wow. Take a look uh, at sounds there. like she has. <laughs> 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 oh, we see it now. You're like, wow, we yeah, didn't see it. We amazing. got it now. There you go. So again, you can click and, you and this is a good way if you wanted to reach a lot of students but didn't need them to participate, that you could hook up to as many as you wanted within Collaborate and then demonstrate this lab for them. That would be a nice pre-lab activity so they aren't like overwhelmed when they first go in there if you kind of did a little pre-show and tell. It and what I did was I did a live, you know, because my classes are synchronous, I did a live, probably half an hour lecture. I didn't have the screenshots that I have now on exactly what they need to do. So with the screenshots and with the Captivate, what we could do is it would be nice to just put together an entire presentation, whether it's recorded, you know, put the Captivate in there and say, okay, students, you know, here we go, here's how we do it. We just requested, you know, I'm going to need somebody to walk me through this. Click a button <laughs> left or right with the controls up on the uh, upper left. You should see the, uh, there we go. Yay. Yay. Good. And uh, Director Bolson, you may want to move your objective and play with that. Maybe start like uh, Susan Merkovich did, start at 10. And then see, and then go ahead and focus it, and then go up to at least 40, and then capture an image. Type it or click it. No, click it. So you see objective where it says 60 times. Right. Go ahead and click that arrow. So, okay. Yeah. So you're going to go all the way to four. Go, go, go up one. There you go. Uh, you'll That's notice it. that she is also um, she is also working with the luminosity. So she's set at six right now, and that adjusts the intensity of the light mm -hmm. through the sample. Yeah, you should turn off the auto exposure though, because the camera is trying to adjust its own iris on that, and then you're also oh. adjusting the light that is on the microscope. So there's sort of a battle going on there. Okay, thanks. Now you move those up or down controls. We didn't, I found, Susan, we didn't really use fine very much, Albert. I don't think we used it very much because we just got somewhat focused and then we hit autofocus and then we might have hit up or down one more time to focus better. So see if you can get that in focus using the up and down and autofocus. It really depends on the slide that I found. If there's, you know, any dust on it or so, they autofocus sometimes just out a little bit. That's pretty good. Try autofocus from there. Yeah. That one. How's that? You need to give us just a second. 
because it's a little bit of a lag. Yeah, it's still oh, blurry. Calibrating. A little blurry. So, as you know, there's a question about a 100x uh, objective. Uh, if a lab needs that, we can probably get one. Go ahead and go to 60x, Director Bolson, and let's see and let's see if let's see how that looks without any manipulation there. And then autofocus. Is that right, too? You suggest that we autofocus this one and then do the fine. Yes, I would suggest that. Yeah, the autofocus. Okay. I'm a big I'm a big fan of the autofocus. <laughs> yeah, we really like that. <laughs> Sorry, just try fine tuning rather than autofocus, because if you autofocus, then it's going to. I think its difference is going from the 4x to the 10x. I'm really exploring here a little bit. Good. So remember, they'll have several different slides. So the more intense lab uh, has six slides, and then for the human biology course, they have four slides. And so, like I said, if we the onion root, root tip is really pretty cool. Um, shows the whitefish blastula. But you get an idea here of, of you know the view and how well you can see this and capturing an image and then working on that later or during the lab, which I really like. I think this is great for any of our visually impaired students as well. So if, for example, you could ask a student to identify what appeared to be sperm and they would have to take, they would have to magnify it to a point that they could see that and then uh, capture the picture. They could email that to you conceivably or, or load it on a thumb drive and yep. post it in Blackboard as a, an assignment. What, what they're going to do for me in particular, and I think everybody is going to run their lab a bit differently because, you know, we can modify the original lab, um, is they will have an appendix A with the animal cell and the plant cell and have to identify the stages of mitosis. So they'll take that from their computer and they'll go ahead and import that into a Word document, label them, and then Appendix B is going to be the ovaries and the testes, just really for this class basic, like a primary oocyte and a primary follicle. And really this one, I think I was only going to have them identify the uh, tail of the sperm. So yeah, they just import it and I'm gonna, they're going to put it in Appendix A and B. And this is going to substantiate their uh, introduction or the concept, you know, compare and contrast myosis and mitosis. Which slide? A and B. And this is going to substantiate their uh, introduction or the concept, you know, compare and contrast myosis. Uh, Sue, can we uh, check out the special effects here before we go? Ask Albert. Albert, Albert is, Albert's the man. Yeah, you go ahead and you can. Okay, that's the negative. Yes. Uh, so for those of you who are, are curious, why would I change the microscope image using the special effects? Dependent on the sample that is being shown, sometimes to get a more clarity on the image in relationship to what you want to demonstrate, okay. these different settings assist in that. Now I will tell you that the sepia uh, is the one that, that uh, they say we really don't know if there is any utility to this, but on occasion there may be an instance where it helps in clarity of the slide. But all of these normal, negative, blue back, and black and white, they all uh, provide different image captures so that you can uh, get better clarity on the slide you are. I think I can get better clarity viewing with the sepia so on this one. So that you can one. capture it for your lab reports. Hmm. So if you do put the special effect on when you do the capture image, that effect will be on the captured image too. I, I didn't hear that. The microphone. Um, Sue uh, or, or uh, Albert, 
Marie wants to know if you can click around on the other cameras and show us into the lab. Oh, no, look at my image. Isn't that pretty? You're getting pretty good. I, I know it. I want copies of these. <laughs> uh, Deb, okay. uh, Ken is asking, is there a save function on the images? Yes. Um, okay, I'm going to bring up the view capture image. And you see the window that popped up here? If you do that on yours and then right click on it, you can save the picture as. Or you can do the copy and insert it into a Word document, an Excel spreadsheet, okay. or a paint program if you want. OK. Maybe Director Bolson can do that now. Try the copy paste. OK, hang on a second. We're going to save this. Um, that will work, but since we are sharing a specific application, other people mm. in the room will not see that. But it's occurring. But what happens is when the the view captured image is selected, you right click on that captured image, and then you can save it to your computer, mm -hmm. and then you can embed that into a Word document. And that's how the students would save that image to their computer. Of, it embedded into a Word document, and then they're able to use tools within Word to identify specific areas on the specimen that they have been requested to identify, such as sperm. About network. Okay, and I also right wanted there. to mention. So we're seeing the lab, right? Albert, you're showing us the lab? Uh, not me, but someone else is. <laughs> <laughs> but it's coming through my computer. So uh, what I'd like to kind of define for people who are participating in this demo so that they kind of they understand the logistics, Kodiak will be using the lab that is in, at North Island College. So that's Albert's um, node, Nanslow node. Currently, the login procedures at the North Island College node are different than what occurs in Denver. Denver has just set up a Citrix server, which also allows students to use a Mac as well as a PC to go into these labs. On Albert's side currently, they have to use a PC, cannot use a Mac to access the labs. So there are two two processes when they're doing the experiment. One of those processes is just to get to the microscope or the piece of equipment that they will be using for the lab activity. So that when we talk about logging in, that's what we're really talking about. They have a username and password so they can actually access the equipment. Once they're inside, and have access to that equipment, there's a piece of software. It's an interface that allows that student to manipulate the piece of equipment they're using for the experiment. LabVIEW is a piece of software that is an industry standard, actually, for um, moving equipment, capturing data, that type of thing. So the visual you're seeing here is what we call LabVIEW software. It is the control panel that is used to um, move uh, the equipment with robotics. So when a student presses a button, as an example for the slide sorter, where they're asking the slide sorter to go backward, this software has been programmed to state, OK, there is a robotic that allows that microscope um, uh, slide to move backwards. And so when I click on this button, that gives control to a control a command to a robotic that actually moves the stage backward. So just to kind of um, eliminate any confusion that might happen, as I said, you have a login process to access the equipment. Once you've accessed it, you have a piece of software, which is the control panel, to actually manipulate the equipment. And the reason that we weren't sure about Denver or BC. Yes, yes. You know, there's a question about uh, mobile capability. I would have answered this in the chat, but it doesn't seem to be working for me right now. Um, I have tested this out on um, an iPad, and we are able to make a connection, but it's not a, a smooth interface for tablets yet. So we're not uh, going to recommend that. But I think within the near future, we will have um, versions of this that will run on uh, any of the tablets. 
Okay, uh, Albert and Sue, or Sue Schmidt, are we are we done here? Do you think that we've uh, demonstrated everything that we need to? I think so. Um, just a couple things from my side. I did post on in the chat area two links. I encourage people to go to the Chio Wiki, where we have a list of the. Um, we have one folder that's called the Discipline Panel Workspace, where each of the activities that we're working on have a folder, and within that folder is um, the Nanslow Lab activity as it is being developed. I have also sent a link that identifies the 12 Nanslow activities that have currently been identified and prioritized. So that's our list to work on right now. So at any time, you know, these two folders are areas where we'll, we will be adding information. So not only will the discipline panel faculty be in these folders making comments and suggestions in relationship to enhancing these, but it's also a place where anybody can go and look and see what's happening in relationship to those labs. So um, I just want, and also I just wanted to turn it over to the, our guests. I know you've been pretty active in the chat area, but are there any other questions that you would like us to address before we close out the session? Absent any additional questions, um, I think we'll go ahead and close this session. Again, if you do have any last minute questions before we close, please click on the raise hand button so we can grab your question. Otherwise, we want to thank you all for participating today. And if you do have any additional questions you think about after this session, um, I'll put my email address down and as well maybe some other people could put theirs down. So if you have specific questions in regard to this uh, Nanslow Lab activity or others, please give us an email and we'll be happy to address them.